Today I'm sharing a summary of collected information about what's coming in the fall. I'm Ann Tucker and this is the Spirit Means Business YouTube channel. And I am a trans channel. I, I, connect, to, uh, I connect through the angelic realm and I channel information. Uh, I get word by word. I write those down and I share them with you here. Um, and I've been sharing them in a series of videos. And a lot of those messages recently have been about what's coming this fall. There's going to be a lot of disruption. And, and yes, we've had a lot of disruption so far with coronavirus but there is more yet to come and what's coming next is uh, bigger and uh, it's it's going to get worse before it gets better so what's on the other side is wonderful right we're heading towards a place of ascension um, and that's going to be amazing and I've gotten a lot of messages about that as well but what I want to share with you today is about what's coming specifically this fall and there's specific things I've channeled that I've already shared with you but it, you know as I've been channeling them I've been getting messages from other people saying hey I had a dream that confirmed that or I heard this other channeling that confirmed that and it's made me more and more uh, focused on on the specific the date that I got and the specific events and what it may look like so I really wanted to share with you sort of all the different so I've kind of been triangulating because you know as I'm sharing stuff with you I, I feel a real sense of responsibility about trying to be as accurate as I can be and when I get these confirmations it really it makes me feel a lot more bold about what I say because um, I feel like okay if multiple people are that don't know each other on the opposite sides of the country are getting the same information that's a pretty good confirmation that the information as far as we know we know that there are different timelines and that things are not always guaranteed to happen right because things can change but at the moment these timelines are possible and these things may happen so I think it's important to share because there's things that we can do that we can uh, that will help us to be more comfortable that will help us to get to the other side so that we can be part of this ascension here on earth so all right so you guys probably know in my previous videos I talked about a, an earth rift which is like a super volcano and I also talked about a period of blackout and those are the two things I'm going to be focusing on talking about the different pieces of information that I've gotten related to those so the first thing is in terms of the this volcano um i recently got a date about that which i shared in my last video which was 11 11 november 11th coming up here in about as of recording this it's about a month away and and the way they express that they didn't say the numbers because when i'm channeling i need to stay on the right side of my brain and if they say a number or if i think numbers it sort of pulls me out of that and then i can't really trust what i get from that point forward so the way they said it was that it would happen in the period of your twofold remembrance and uh, and at the time i didn't understand what that meant um and they'll frequently do that they do that i think it helps me to have more confidence in what i'm what i'm getting if i don't understand it when i'm getting it and then i look it up later and it makes sense like i maybe they'll use a word i don't understand or something like that and it helps me to know that it's not my own thoughts that this is something that that i'm i'm receiving clearly and, uh, and sure enough, at the time my son was helping me with that channeling, he was transcribing for me and he knew right away what it was. He said, okay, twofold remembrance, that means uh, the day of remembrance, uh, which is Veterans Day here, but we call that uh, internationally, it's called Remembrance Day. And it is a twofold remembrance day. It remembers World War I as well as veterans. So it's a twofold remembrance day and it happens on 11-11, which is also a very powerful day from a numerological perspective, 11-11. It's also uh, right around the time that Mars is gonna be stationing direct as it goes, comes out of its retrograde. So it will be in a very powerful uh, position because of the conjunctions and things right at the time coming actually specifically on 11 14 but it's right in that time period so anyway so 11 11 was the date that I got uh, and, and that's how I would interpret it anyways the, the twofold remembrance I would interpret that as being around 11 11 um, and there are several other people that have since come forward saying that they independently got the exact same date and I'll tell you about that so one was specifically uh, someone had a dream uh, and I heard this from my friend Michael Sheridan who's a dream interpreter he received this dream um, where someone saw um, a sign above the Space Needle it was a sign right above the Space Needle here in Seattle that said 1111 sonic boom so and there is evidence when you have the last time there was a huge volcano like this uh, was in like 500 and something AD 536 or 550 somewhere around there 500 and something AD and that's when Krakatoa they believe it was Krakatoa exploded 
And the interesting thing about it is that that explosion was recorded as far away as China where they found ancient writings where people talked about what sounds like a sonic boom, a deep rumbling that came through that, you know, that shook things. So, um, so this volcano could create a sonic boom and that's what she wrote, 1111 sonic boom. So um, there's also another woman I know, um, Erica Larson, who's a healer who had a dream about being in her apartment and feeling this small earthquake. And she frequently will have prim uh, uh, dreams that are premonitions about things that are gonna directly affect her. So she's had a dream once about a, a tree falling on a building and then the next week a tree fell on the building. So she's this dream of a small earthquake, which is not an earthquake, a sonic boom, right? So, um, uh, the same woman who had the dream about the the sonic boom, she also had a lucid dream where a guide specifically spoke to her and said that the date that she was looking for was 1111. So there's several different confirmations of that date. There's also another channel I know, Heidi Brook, who uh, was told that it was uh, that it was going to happen on the date of her brother's birthday, which was 1111. So, um, so multiple confirmations of that date for this possible earth rift or super volcano. Um, uh, in addition to the, like I said, the astrological and numerological comfort, you know, the support for something like that happening on that day. Um, okay, so other confirmations that I've gotten, um, I, I told you about the sonic boom, the earthquake. Um, also, interestingly, um, Paul Selig, who's a very well-known channel, just recently released a video um, in which he channeled about a cataclysm called Sleeping Dragon. So to me, that sounds an awful. A Sleeping Dragon makes me think volcano. <laughs> so, because, you know, they breathe fire, they come up from the earth, right? They're, and it's a cataclysm. They specifically mentioned cataclysm. Um, uh, there's also another, um, uh, channel that I know that, that confirmed that what I said, earth rift, he came back with super volcano. So these are coming in from, like I said, from all different people. As soon as I publish a video, I, I get these, oh yeah, I heard something like that. So I'm getting all this confirming information I, and it helps in terms of being able, I think, to be able to triangulate this and understand just how accurate is this and get more, more data, more information. It's sort of like that idea of, um, that old story of, you know, you have seven blind people touching an elephant and they are all gonna come away with a slightly different view of what that elephant is. But if you put all their different views together, you get a much more accurate picture of what an elephant actually looks like. So that's what we're doing here is sort of taking my channelings and then supporting them with all these other different inf pieces of information and it together gives us a much more complete picture of what things could be. And again, like I said, this is not guaranteed. The, this is a potential timeline. It, right now, it looks like we are on this timeline still. Um, and But there is always the possibility that things could change. Um, but many people are seeing these similar visions or supporting visions. Um, okay, so then the another piece to think about as we're talking about this is that um, there's been multiple people who have seen things coming in as three waves, that there's three major world events that are, are happening as part of this ascension process. And the first one is the coronavirus. The second one is potentially this, this earth rift or super volcano. And the third is a, uh, um, a solar flare or period of blackout. And so these are three separate events. And so I've got multiple people who come in with, with just information about our dreams relating to three waves. So there's one woman who had the dream specifically three waves coming in that are like waves of energy coming in. Another saw it as like a hoe that was kind of going through that had three prongs that were sort of culling or, or churning. And it was one after another, three different waves. So, so this is the idea that there are three events with coronavirus being the first global event. And now we're heading into the second and the third. Um, uh, so as part of that, um, and as part of the volcano, um, there, here's other, another piece of it, another piece of that elephant I was talking about is this idea of there being a lot of water in the sky. And, um, and, uh, one person that I know that came back and said, okay, it's part of this super volcano that a, a, a big, uh, amounts of several, you know, three, four percent of ocean of the Indian Ocean could end up sort of boiling off and being brought up into the sky. Um, so there would be this heavy, heavy cloud, cloud cover. And and in the past volcano, and the one that happened in um, five thirty something or whatever A.D., that one um, it erupted and it shot a bunch of debris up into the up into the sky and up into the atmosphere. And it's this super fine particle dust. 
And because it's so fine, it just stays suspended in the air for a really, really long period of time and it would block out the sun, which cools the planet, which sounds great for global warming. However, because the planet was cooled, it prevented the ocean from evaporating. It prevented our normal water system from working. So it created widespread drought. Um, because of the, the temperature was cooled. So that was a really negative thing in terms of the survival, people's survival. Well, this time around, it sounds like from what people are, are picking up that there will be this huge amount of ocean water that is boiled and brought up into the atmosphere. And I don't know how long that would stay. I'm hoping that it would stay for a long time because that would really help with this whole concept of drought. And it might even help to rain some of that particle dust out of the atmosphere so but but um, and I'm not a meteorologist I don't pretend to understand specifically how that would happen I'm just sharing you with you what people's you know channelings and dreams are showing about ocean water being brought up into the sky so so first was this three to four percent of the Indian Ocean or of some ocean so it's a big amount of water in any case and supporting channelings for that have come in um, the same woman who dreamt about the three waves of energy coming into Seattle she saw the third wave of energy coming up and touching the sky and staying there um, so it was like a wave of water coming up and touching the sky and then staying there so to me that supports this idea of the ocean evaporating and staying up there um, there's another woman that was a friend, uh, a friend who had a, a dream where she was on the beach, but the beach extended really, really, really far, like much further than it normally would, as if uh, like a, like a tide going out or a big chunk of ocean rising up to the sky. Um, and she did in that dream. There was other pieces of that dream which were disturbing, which I I don't think is necessary to share. But but the the main thing about it is that this idea that there's the water's really far out. So, okay, so those, those are all things that support this idea of this volcano, people seeing it from different angles. Um, there's also um, another um, a guy that I saw that somebody sent me a video that he did a video about prophetic dreams. And in it, he showed, um, uh, or he saw that there were um, people cold in their houses. Um, and when he could look outside the window, he saw uh, that there were, uh, like ash on the sun that he said it was like snow but it wasn't snow it was like an ash on the you know I would interpret it as a dark sort of you know snow like substance on the all you know covering so that I could see that as being the cold temperature being the temperature drop of the of the uh, from the volcano and that could also mean the that there's ash everywhere so um, and, and then he also said in all of his premonitions he's seeing heavy clouds all the time so, so these are all things that I see as being supportive of this possible earth rift or super volcano. Um, and if that happens, important things to know is that it could reduce the temperature of the planet. So we're talking like, think about wherever you live, think about it going one season back. So if it's summer, it might feel more like spring. Spring will feel more like fall, fall more like winter and winter a whole lot colder. <laughs> so drop that temperature quite a bit. So it's gonna be cold. So think about how you might prepare for that. If this happens, it could be a really, really cold. Um, and think about like in terms of your, you know, in terms of preparing that solar energy is not really going to work all that great, that we're going to have this really heavy cloud cover. And I've heard in terms of how long that could last, I've heard it could last for a couple of years. So solar is not necessarily going to be a great backup option in terms of how you're going to think about keeping, keeping yourself comfortable and safe during all of this. So, um, all right. Okay. So then the next piece of this is, uh, and I channeled not that long ago, I got a new piece of information where they said that we are entering the period of blackout, that there would be no, uh, no telephone, no telecommunications. And I shared that in my last video. So if you wanna see that, you can, you can check that out. Um, and in the previous videos, I'm specifically reading to you directly what I received. So if you want to hear it first person, check out the previous videos because I will read you exactly the words that I received um, from the angels. And uh, okay, so, so this period of blackout, um, this is, I understand now to be a solar flare. And they, what I got specifically was a period of blackout, no, tele, te, no tele, uh, telecommunications or um, uh, yeah, no telecommuting is what they referred to. So the different confirmations I've had from this, okay, from that same guy who was having the prophetic dreams, my friend sent me his videos, 
Um, he talked about seeing uh, and, and a, a solar flare. In case you're unfamiliar with what a solar flare is, it's like a like a solar storm on the sun. And these happen at different times, but a big enough one creates this energy that comes to the planet and can mess with all of our electronics. And it doesn't necessarily hurt your physical body. However, there's a um, a lot of discussion about this solar flare being connected to the ascension. That this is all about. That this whole thing is about the ascension. So you may have seen if you've seen a, and a lot of spiritual you know channeling and blog discussion around um, that we're going through this ascension and this final massive solar wave that's coming is about sort of giving us the final huge push into the ascension into 5d or however you, you have been thinking about that um, and so but and that's fantastic and that's the great news and there is like beautiful things unfolding on the other side and it's not all immediate right it uh, unfolds over time but um, but in the meantime, the solar it comes in not just as a wave of energy, but as a solar flare, which can have also a very damaging effect on the planet. And not so much on the planet, but on us, <laughs> on our technical infrastructure. So satellites, uh, like I said, telecommunications, all this kind of stuff can be really impacted. So the, the guy that I talked about who sent over the videos, what he saw was sort of flickering lights across the whole country going all the way up into Canada. And that I'll show you some stuff in a moment that that matches. Um, he saw um, a headline saying like, who's responsible for the blackout? Like there's this nationwide, the idea of this blackout nationwide. Um, he saw this happening in the period from December to January. He saw people standing in line for food, not in cars. Right now, right, everybody's, when people are in food lines right now, they're in cars. He saw them lining up for food, no cars. So why would that be? Well, a, something like this, an event like this, can stop all of any of your large, particularly the large electronics, um, may stop working. It can definitely affect the grid, our ability to access grid, but a big enough one could affect even small electronics. So, um, so the idea that there's no cars running, that could be a definitely effect of this solar flare, that it basically fries all the electronics. Um, uh, and he also saw no Christmas lights. So again, related to the grid. Um, so another channel, I know Heidi Brooks, she um, saw no cars. She saw cars sort of stopped in their tracks with the hoods up and people tinkering inside, like trying to figure out why won't my car run. Um, she saw uh, people on foot, like trying to, they have to walk where they need to go. Um, she was also told to print her photos, right? Like she wouldn't be able to access, she might lose her photos. If her photos are all online, they could be hard to access. Um, uh, another uh, channel that I know uh, saw this as specifically as a solar flare and was told that this would be, you know, the idea would be sort of like going back to the Stone Age, that for all of our technical advances that we won't have access to during this period. And is this pe permanent or not? No, it's not. I mean, it's it's it, there. It, it's varies depending on if something like this happens. There will be some areas that are really impacted in a really devastating way. Other areas will have a much lighter touch. So, but even so, if you have spotted, you know, some areas where it's where the things are really blasted, and you're trying to get the internet is a web, right? It's all over the place. There's servers all over the place. So you may even if you are still connected in some way you may be trying to use the internet and find that that your servers were stored in a place that that has been zapped <laughs> and you can't get access to data and so it, it's it's hard to predict exactly what our lived experience will be um, but it could be a situation where yeah there's no technology no access that zoom doesn't work anymore right that that none of this is working so um, a couple more things to to confirm this um, in my other channeling sort of yes they told me specifically about the blackout but then there's a lot of other other things that they said to me that then come in to confirm this so such as they said that banks would close that we would not be able to access our money um, uh, and that would be naturally that if if technology shuts down then the banks can't function right they can't access their information and ATMs wouldn't work right um, uh, they also specifically said the angels said no transferring money that we wouldn't be able to move money from one place to another which I couldn't understand for months I couldn't understand why that would be right I could understand if maybe if the stock market crashed that they would close the banks for a weekend or a day you know to prevent a run on banks but they were talking about in a longer period and then they said no transferring money so I could not figure out why that would be unless it was this solar flare so when I got that made it all kind of made it all click in like everything all the pieces are sort of coming together that that would make perfect sense if if there's you know if the internet isn't working then we can't transfer money 
Um, they also said in a previous channeling that truck drivers would abandon their routes. And I assume that would be maybe because of, you know, rioting or something like that. But it could also be because the trucks don't work. So all these pieces do really fit together. Um, another piece of this that from another sort of like hand on the elephant that I talked about, um, that if there is a solar flare, and I'll show you in a moment, um, uh, the, well, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and share this with you now. This is a uh, report. So this is uh, dipping into the, the science piece of this, looking at, um, uh, there's a, 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 an insurance company called Lloyd's, which did a report. They hired some, uh, you know, some research doctors and PhDs to, and, and to specifically look at what are the effects of a solar flare? Um, and they were focused specifically on North America. So, and so this report, it's called the, uh, the Solar Storm Risk uh, to the North American Grid, conducted by Lloyd's Insurance. And they had scientists doing this from the Atmospheric and Environmental Research uh, Incorporated. That's the name of the company that did it. Um, and there are three major physical risk factors that they looked at in terms of how a solar flare is going to affect us. They looked at the magnetic latitude, the ground conductivity, which is like basically think about like is there minerals in the ground, metals in the ground, or water in the ground that could conduct electricity, highly conductive. Some, some types of ground matter are more conductive than others. So some areas of the world are gonna be more conductive. Are gonna, in other words, as, as the solar flare energy moves around the globe, it's going to be carried more easily to some areas versus others. So just in like, like there's some areas that like in terms of transferring electricity from one place to another, if you have an insulator, it prevents energy from flowing. If you have a conductor, it encourages energy to flow. Um, so then the third factor was the distance from the coast because water is a great conductor of electricity. Um, there was also technological risk factors such as the length of connecting transmission lines because the longer the line, the more, the more it's likely to sort of catch a charge and carry it. Um, uh, they also talked about some of these very scientific sounding things, the KV rating of lines, the extra high voltage transformers for those, those, for those EHV transformers, they looked at what is the internal and ground resistance. They also looked at their core construction. Then the third factor was the presence of capacitors, which are the things that block the flow of geomagnetically induced currents, so things that would sort of prevent the flow. So these are all the factors they looked at. And I'm just going to show you, um, some, uh, charts here to look at. Uh, just a moment here, let me pull these up to show you. Okay, so these are um, uh, three different slides that I've got to share with you. that are showing you what uh, what areas might be most influenced by this solar storm, by this solar flare. And this is looking at magnetic latitude. So looking at, um, they're saying, so the bands of magnetic color or latitude are color coded. Um, so the deeper the purple, the more likely that there will be an effect. So you can see that they have, they've always said that, that the way that a solar storm would come in and affect the planet is it sort of, our magnetic field sort of forms a protective barrier around the planet, but it's toroid. It comes in like sort of like two halves of an apple and that sort of come, the energy comes in and touches at the North Pole and then around and then in at the South Pole. So as the solar storm comes in, it sort of touches the outside of the apple and then follows it and comes into the North Pole and it follows it and comes in at the South Pole. So these are the areas that are sort of most, you know, where that energy is likely to come in. So you can see that the energy is darker at the North Pole and the South Pole. You get those dark purple energy, those dark, dark purple bands. And in the middle along the equator is practically, it's white, it is very little of this of this magnetic energy going through there so um so depending on where you are on this map you can see whether you're going to be dark purple or light purple or white right in terms of how how much the magnetic latitude will be a factor it's not the only factor though there's a few other factors so a second factor is based on besides latitude is ground conductivity. So how conductive is the ground? And here, they, like I said, I'm sorry, they were only looking at North America. I know many of you are from other parts of the world. I did try to find maps about this from other parts of the world and I haven't been able to yet. But I thought rather than waiting till I found one, I will go ahead and share this now. And then if any of you find one, please post it in the comments. Um, but this shows North America ground conductivity. Um, and so you can see that there's the, that South, the Southern U S is dark red. So the dark red is the most conductive. 
Um, so we've got going up into Canada um, and then a, sort of along the east coast going into that orange and red or the, the highest conductive. Then when you get into yellow that's kind of in the middle and so you can see sort of the big middle of the United States and going up into the east side or the west side of Canada is in that yellow and then the uh, green is is yet again less and then the blue is the best of all. Um, so you can see along the American West Coast, um, we've got mostly yellow except up in the Pacific Northwest, it goes to that green color. So it's slightly less conductive. Um, so that's kind of the map of the whole, the whole North America, what that would look like in terms of, and again, we, like I said, you have to look at number one, the, the latitude, where you are from a latitude perspective, as well as the ground conductivity, um, and, and then the distance from the coast. So that's why the coasts are slightly, you know, they're going to they're gonna show up as being more conductive, more likely to have an effect than the middle of the country. All right. So then this is there, because the third factor is very hard to model, the third, this, this other piece of it, the technical side of it, in terms of just looking at what is the technical infrastructure, is very hard to model, because it's gonna ba be based on how old is the infrastructure, right? How long are the transmission lines? Um, how, uh, how many capacitors have they put in, in into their system to sort of dampen down these kind of energies to prevent them from flowing for so far. So Canada was hit by a solar storm back in the 80s and uh, in Quebec, I believe, and they got pretty fried. So because of that, they were able to pass funding to put in a bunch of capacitors throughout their system. So they upgraded their system. So even though they are further north, you can see that on that previous slide that they are They've got a, you know, a lot of red and you can see in the latitude that Canada is you know, up in the darker purple, um, but even so, they've put in these capacitors to sort of dampen down the effect so they may come out of this okay, um, depending on how severe it is or how extreme it is. Um, but but uh, so, we, so we can't really um, factor, we can guess for that in terms of what those, because the, the, in terms of the information that's available about the age of the grid is imperfect. But what Lloyd's did, and Lloyd's did the insurance company who ran this and the, this, this company they hired um, of research scientists to put this report together, here they have a, a sort of an experiment, a, um, uh, this would be like a, a test case of what might, a simulation of what might happen. And it shows the dark purple shows how strong, how a solar storm might affect different regions. So you can see it is very strong coming down through Canada, down through the Midwest, and then along the East Coast and along the South and some along the West Coast as well. Um, are sort of the bit, there's a little bit of purple kind of, you know, it's light purple in different areas there. So you can see which areas might be most affected um, in the US at least, and then going up a little bit into Canada. And again, I apologize that I don't have this for the rest of the world. I know that, like I said, so many of you are from other parts and I would love to be able to find this. I felt very lucky to have found this report. <laughs> so, and if you guys know of anything else like this, looking at other regions, please do share it with, a, with, with us, put, put, put it in the comments. Um, so something that they said in terms of the highest risk in the U.S., the highest risk areas are specifically the corridor from New York City to, to D.C. That area is, you can see it's super dark purple. It's right near the coast, so it's highly, it's highly conductive and the infrastructure is super old. So it kind of, and it's magnetic and it has like everything going for it in terms of being very affected by this solar storm. So that whole area um, is not so great. Um, the Midwest, they also say, is high risk, as well as regions along the Gulf Coast are highly affected. So in terms of the U.S., those are the highest risk areas. So just to know that if you're in those areas, um, to really be taking this seriously in terms of, of how you might be prepared. Um, so there is now to, to go ahead again to look at this and to reinforce some of this from more sources of channeling. This is where it gets really interesting, where the channeling is backed up by the science um, is that I know two separate people who live on opposite sides of the country who had the same dream of Washington DC on fire um, that you know buildings burning and in a solar form of a very strong solar flare can cause things to ignite so that actually happened um, back in the, the, the first of the, the the last really really big event happened in the 1800s and they call it the Carrington event and it was a major solar storm and people could actually see you know the aurora borealis all the way down you know it's like in, it was reported in you know like close to the equator practically like it was literally and and that will happen by the way if we have the solar storm 
other than the fact that there's going to be this massive cloud cover there would be the potential to see the aurora borealis you know all over the place in crazy places so if there's a cloud cover it might just light up the clouds in a really amazing way so that's something to look out for but um but what uh, this one woman saw was Washington DC on fire. And in that last Carrington event, what they call the Car they call it Carrington because it was named by this British guy who, who uh, saw the Aurora Borealis and kind of put it all together. But there were telegraph wires that burst into flames and telegraph equipment that was really affected. So, so things can actually spontaneously catch on fire with this kind of a, a very high energy that's coming in. So DC could, and the DC being in a high risk area, these two dreams, two visions of DC on fire, um, both people saw it burning, and they saw uh, the one of the the woman that saw it in the vision. Um, uh, there were some other confirming elements to the vision that have since come true. So, um, so this could be you could say that DC would be on fire because of rioting, because of the election. That's very possible, but it could also be because of this solar flare. Um, now, uh, a lot of people have said, and I do this, I think this is true, there's a lot of um, channeling going on and spiritual discussion around this solar energy. They're not necessarily referring it to as a solar flare, they're referring to a solar energy that's coming in that's part of the ascension energy. And they're talking about this energy is being built and it's getting ready and they're going to be sending it to it. And it's super important in terms of our upgrading, our spiritual upgrading. Um, and and um, the, the, some of the channels that I've heard talking about that, they've said that um, people will be in, the people who are sort of receiving these energies who maybe are not as ready for them, it might, they might be left in a state of confusion. Um, and I have seen in my own dreams, I had a dream the other night about um, showing a guy uh, coming back to his apartment and his whole building had collapsed like the upper floors of the building had literally been flattened but his unit was still relatively intact and he was coming in with his young son trying to say look it's all fine everything's fine <laughs> that he was in denial that and then the building started collapsing you know what I mean but he was in denial that anything had changed so that there may be coming out of this people's readiness to accept what's going on both in terms of the environment what's happening around us as things are becoming difficult for a while with all these this this potential cataclysmic events um and there's going to be really some rough times but also from a spiritual perspective right from these ascension energies there may be people that are in a state of confusion so that could be a case but anyways I'm seeing that as, you know, as a sort of a period of potential you have denial by some people. The message I got with that was like that you can try to share these messages and I've been told that sharing this information is part of my calling. That, that to let you guys know this so that you can be prepared and both emotionally prepared, spiritually prepared, but also physically prepared so that you will know what's coming. Um, that there could be, it could be much colder than you're used to. There could be um, major food shortages. There could be um, uh, water problems or could be bacteria in the water so it's things like that you just need to t do things that you can do to take care of yourselves to make sure that you're safe and comfortable um, and they told me that yes I need to share these messages and share that information they also told me that not everybody's going to listen and that's okay and I need to just release that so I'm doing my best to release that and as you take this information and share it with people that you care about and that you want to make sure are safe also release that and know that you can't be everybody's savior that you can't save everyone that that they it, it's a matter of free choice it's always free choice and people will either accept it or they won't and they will receive it or not and and again this might not happen so it might be all fine at the end of the day but if it does it certainly doesn't hurt to take some actions to make sure that you're safe either way and whether this happens or not being prepared for disasters is a good a good thing to do regardless so um, so anyways, there's, those are the major pieces of comfort and there's actually been a lot more. This is just sort of a short synopsis of different confirmations that I've received about these events and, and, um, but they go on and on. I've been getting more and more people getting little glimpses, pieces of this and that, and you put them all together and you get this broader picture. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, I will share more channelings as I'm getting them. Um, I, that, you know, I, they, they kind of, the angels kind of say what they feel is important to say when they say it. So, um, and then I am sharing it with you. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will post um, in the comments, I'll post a link to the report if you want to read the whole report. I will also report a link to, um, there's a service from the National Weather Service, uh, solar energy, uh, the solar weather report where you can sign up to be notified 
if this solar flare comes. And I believe the solar flare may happen. It may happen on 1221. That's what most of the people who are tapping into the ascension energy are talking about, 1221, as being a summer solstice, right? It's a really big day from an astrological perspective. And um, so that may be the case, but this service, um, because there are satellites out there that watch for solar flares, they will give us some degree of warning. It could be as much as 24 hours. It might not be that long, but it could be as much as 24 hours of notice of something like this coming. So there's a place where you can sign up to get that notification. So I'll include that link in the comments. I'll put those, I mean, not in the comments, but in the description, I'll put links to both of those two things, the report and the place to register for notice in the, in the uh, comments below. So, and um, things that you can do in terms of preparing for a solar flare, um, there's a thing called a Faraday cage, F-A-R-A-D-A-Y. And it's, you can build one super simply from a state, you know, a, one of the metal trash cans, you line it with insulation. There's, there's, and if you just start searching online about Faraday cages, there's loads of information. That's not my expertise, but I just wanna make sure you guys know um, what you can do. And you can put things inside a, a Faraday cage to protect them from, you know, your electronics, a laptop, you know, uh, communication devices, that kind of stuff. Not that we're gonna necessarily, if this happens, we might not have cell towers. So just let your mind wander about what's possible and then think about the ways that you should be prepared based on where you are. So um, I have been talking about this more in my Facebook group, which is called Spirit Means Business. If you go to Facebook and you search Spirit Means Business, uh, my last Friday Live, I went through and talked about all the ways in which I prepared for this and I shared all of the solutions I found. And if you'd like to hear that, just come on over and join in and you can see the video in that group. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate that you guys are, are open and listening to this information and sharing it with anybody that you feel will um, be open as well um, so that we can all be prepared and be ready for the incredibly beautiful things that are coming on the other side. So I will be very happy to see you all there. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.